basically I was told after the uh, announcement for this game um, being released for the Wii U next year at uh, Spring 2016. Oh, wait a second. Looks like our guys are ready for this next matchup. So we have Seijun versus Hugs. All right, this matchup, he gets the phase transition. Knocked him into the duel. Oh, wow, great combos here from Seijun. Wow. Amazing combo indeed. Yeah, one thing I was going to mention was that a lot of players ask if the controls are difficult for this game. And uh, the controls are really intuitive, you know. For players that are in, that played uh, fighters with uh, simple controls, this is basically, you know, they'll be able to get into this game Actually, relatively. Actually, discuss that. I mean, you come, uh, obviously, you come from a Super Smash Brothers background. Absolutely. I come from more of a Tekken background. I think... Um, I don't know, I think the control scheme is very, like you said, intuitive. And it, it if you're familiar with either one of those games, it actually helps out into your favor. Oh, indeed. You have the uh, light attack, the heavy attack, the special attack, and jump, which is kind of similar to Smash, if you think about it. Except, uh, usually Smash has just one main attack. But here we go. All right. Oh, we're choosing to go for the range game, so chucking rocks. Wow, and great usage of Miracle, but Hugs at managing the block in time. Oh, he hooks up right in front of him. He has absolutely no fear. Great usage of the Aurora Beam, and as you notice, after it hits the opponent, you are knocked backwards. And you can actually tech when you get um, hit by attacks, too, in midair and on the ground. Yeah, I noticed, though, we were talking to the, some of the other players, when you do tech, you seems you take more damage, but you do recover faster. Mm -hmm. So it's a trade-off. You have to decide what you want to do, if you want the positional Okuze Okuzemi. Like right here. But oh, great usage no. of the burst. Yes. Did he block in time? Oh, he did. I thought he would pull it off. But look at all that chip damage. Oh, my gosh. And only 17 HP left on hugs. So pretty much any hit's going to end it here. He has 2 HP left. Wow, nice dash under. I am so impre impressed by the play from both of these players. And right there, Hugs actually might have had an opportunity for a grab. You saw Suikun blocking for a lot, uh, long period of time. Hugs went for the body slam, and Suikun immediately dashed outside of the range. Almost an opportunity to get the grab as you saw Suikun was blocking, but nope. Uh, Suikun managed to attack just in time, taking that game. And the, this is the mental game that going into it, like a lot of those things players might not notice, but there's so much stuff, there's so much potential in this game. It really makes it exciting, especially from a, a competitive standpoint. So we are winding down throughout our matches. It's going to be interesting. We have in the winners, fi uh, winners finals later on today will be Justin Wong versus Rip. And right now we're closing out the rest of the matches here that we have throughout the lower bracket. Right now you guys are tuning in and watching Seijun and Hugs. Yep, yeah, they're about to battle right here in Tellertown. Again, Machep and Suikun both have high health. Machamp winning out by 30 HP when it comes to that. Look at that. Seijun actually just rushing down, not opting to zone with projectiles. Yeah, I guess he's, uh, he's, he's choosing to duke it out, but right now Machamp winning the exchanges. Oh, and he hulks up. Wow, and hugs from long range. Just basically barreled right into his opponent. But here's a combo by Seijun. Wow. Whoa, oh, the relaunch. Oh, okay. Three times and knocking him straight back into field mode. But Hugs manages to get back, enforcing the dual phase again. Nice anti air, pushes him back. Oh, just outside of range. Yes, great spacing right there by Seijun. And here comes the combo. Now I'm starting to think he probably might be even able to combo the suit, uh, the burst super into that. It looks like there's enough time. So if he was in the mode, I, I would actually try to go for it. Oh, nice. And he's picking up. All the burst meter, free meter on the ground. Yeah, he's aware of his surroundings. But again, that stomp. But oh, that should be it. Yes, great job by Hugs. Getting the grab opportunity, and now we're one and one. Oh, one zero here in the round. Yep. First match went to Seijun. Mm -hmm. So Hugs fighting back. All right, so round two, here we go. Oh, actually, I'm surprised. I thought Miracle would have been able to counter that. Now, who's out zoning who? This is very interesting to see this type of play from Machamp. Great usage of the ice beam. Okay. Hugs is trying to force his way in. This should be so... Oh, my gosh. Those light attacks are not going to do anything. Did you guys just notice what happened? He basically went right through the attack and just burst attacked him. 
Smart move by Hugs. Dynamic entry. The damage there. All right, let's see if he's able to fight back. Pushes him away a little bit. Oh, right through it. Wow, he's not even afraid of the Leaf Tornado just charging in. Are we going to see an opening into Sheer Cold? Oh. Hugs, great patience. And if you notice, actually, Seijun recovered some health. And 40. I, I think Hugs really comfortable right now with the way the match is going. After that 2-0 early on, he's on the cusp of taking it back and evening it up. Ooh, but using the wrong aerial attack right there. Grab attempt and a finish. Machamp! One of the things I noticed, he's been doing a lot of the jump-ins, especially with uh, the dive-in with Machamp, but then he would cancel and just do... Really cool by Fab, um, noticing that, though, within, like, the first day of <laughs> yeah. this game already being featured at he, the Invitation. He was able to find the good stuff right away. And that's why we had these players here, because they can figure stuff out immediately. Yeah, a great display of the game so far. I mean, okay. I've seen a lot of variety, a lot of adjustments, a lot of learning, and it's been really exciting so far. Oh, here's the decision again. What you gonna do? Okay, <laughs> stick with Eevee, all right. Okay, so this time he's a bit more confident in his support selection. All right, so both players going at it. This is the final match between Tasty Steve and NYC Fab, Charizard versus Blaze again. Yep, and now we see Fab taking more of a zoning approach, mixing up Tasty Steve by coming in with that grab, but then he decides to hang back again. Great usage of Flare Blitz, 183 HP already on Tasty Steve. Oh, great anti-air from Fab. Oh, he's trying to slow him down. Oh, man. This is not looking good right now for Tasty Steve. He's going to have to make some big adjustments here. No chip damage there, Flare Blitz. And finally, the opening that Tasty Steve needed. We're in the dual phase here. Okay, he got him. This should lead to a big combo here. Wow. wow. Whoa. And he's not done yet. And Fab confirming Fly, oh. uh, uh, Flare Blitz off of Fly. First round going to Charizard. All that work. So one round away for Fab. Wow, and here comes the decision making again. I mean, he's either Max, oh, they're both Max actually, aren't they? Yeah. He has access to Water Pulse or Helping Hand, and Helping Hand it is. This is it. All right. Do or faint. Oh, he whiffs. Try to catch him out of there. Yeah, definitely looked like he tried to anti-air him there, but Flare Blitz is just that good. Such an amazing aerial. We have the attack boost for a short amount of time and the health boost. Okay. There's the block attack from Charizard, getting Blaziken off of his back. Usage of the fly, gets the Flare Blitz, oh, nicks him barely upon landing. Caught him here. He should be able to combo, but unable to convert. Yep, just a little too far. Oh, that bait caught him twice already. So much damage from NYC Fab here. Are we going to have to see an activation? His meter is filled. Yeah, we're going to have to see it sooner or later. Doesn't want to let it go to waste. Oh, 30. the time. Yeah, 30 HP left. And there it is. Mega Blaziken. Uh oh, right back at you. Yeah, but Fab also activating. Whoa! He got it. Yeah, he got the Crumble Sun. He had one hit prior to it, though, so it should scale slightly. But it should still do, do significant damage here. Such an amazing tech. Just the fact that Blaziken is back turned afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and he's posing. Right? He's like, you can't see me. All right, 108 HP right now. And Blaziken is actually closing the distance. Oh, no. Fab, smart decision. Good block. Oh, and he's just trying to... Oh, wow! Got that hit is by it. the last hit. And there is the end of Tasty Steve's run with Blaziken. Congratulations to NYC Fab with Charizard moving. And here we go. The match that I wanted to see, Machamp versus Charizard. And while we're immediately kicking it into the dual phase, and it looked like there was a bit of a stun on Charizard, so he probably might be able to combo afterwards. I think so. Yeah. Wow, he gets the full block attack there. Oh, with the long distance punches. And one thing to note, guys, if you do manage to get a crumple on your opponent, try to at least use an attack that is quick enough to capitalize off of the crumple, because if they fall in time, you get no conversion afterwards. Yeah, so you do have an element of getting a free hit if you're able to land that, that, uh, that block attack. Wow, 47 HP so far on Hugs, and he got caught trying to dash back. Oh, nice jump in, though, but he probably should have activated earlier. Yep. You saw him go for the body slam, and he tried to pursue Fab even further with a series of attacks. Fab, using the block attack, which basically armors through attacks, allowed him to take that round. Right here, second round. 
Fun Great usage rocks. of strength, yes. Oh, both players going at aerial antics here. And we are in the duel phase. Oh, what a pause there from Fab. But Hug's patience right now. Ooh. Oh, and there's the Flare Blitz that we we're talking about. Fab really controlling the corner right now. Oh, indeed. Flying to Flare Blitz, which it looked like it left Ma uh, Machamp in a wall splat state. So maybe Charizard could possibly squeeze in another combo. Caught him right out of the air again. And just NYC Fab playing so dominant here. This throw is really going to have to change it up. Yeah, but remember, uh, Shockwave is still there, which could slow down Charizard's mobility. Not just that, he also has burst. He's going to have to activate sooner or later. He has to, oh, right out of range. Now, if you, another thing to note, if your opponent is airborne, they're susceptible to getting attacked by the burst attack if it has range. So they have to be careful. Time is running out. We have 15 seconds left here on the clock. So you have to do something. He's almost out. Oh, he should be out of... Oh, no, the burst doesn't go down while he's getting thrown. Oh, it's gone now. Yep, 31 HP left on... Oh, and Hugs was not blocking. Decided to press forward and get stopped in his tracks by Flamethrower. Hugs losing the first game. Yeah, and the shield, not an instant shield. You ha you ha there is some uh, delay to it, so you have to kind of predict when the opponent's going to attack. You can't just pull it out right away. All right, so we're going to go to our second match here. All right, we're probably going to see a run back of Machamp versus Charizard. If I'm not mistaken, Hugs has been using Machamp for the uh, majority of his uh, playtime with this game. He's really confident in his skills with the character, and I can't wait to see what adjustments going to be made in the next game. Yeah, I would like to see him go for more grabs. I mean, I know it, it, it's really hard to get him on the way that NYC Fab, Fab plays because he does a lot of the jump attacks. So it should be interesting. But once he gets that mentality in there that he's willing to throw, then he could probably bait out and do some anti-airs. And it kind of looks like the stage might be really good for Machev. There are Reggie Ruins with all the unknown in the background. Uh, it's a bit more close quarters. Machev could probably get a better opportunity to stop Charizard from zoning him. Oh, that was a free grab attempt there, looks like. Yep, smart job by Fab right there. And you notice the throw a after Machev gets thrown by Charizard. He gets sent so far away and he has to work his way to getting right back inside range. That's optimal for anyone that wants to play the zoning game, especially for this Charizard. Yeah, so this is definitely perfect for Charizard right here. Oh, got him. Great stun. It looked like Fab tried to follow up regardless. Less mobility right now on Machamp. He is slower. And it doesn't phase hugs, though. He's still trying to go in. He does not care. Oh, he oh, got him. Close combat, and wow, with 66 HP left, he manages to take the first round here in game two. Just enough here, there from the close quarters. Able to knock him out. Yep, so, and he... One round up for Hugs. Confident with the Shockwave Super. Doesn't mind waiting for it to charge. Nice Ooh. drop kick throw. And right now, Fab definitely needs to be careful. Is he going to try to wait out the bulk up? Oh, perfect spacing there for the grab. Ooh, beautiful seismic toss, and you could see the amount of damage that was inflicted on Charizard. All right, he's back in. Free grab attempt here. Now, it should knock him fairly far away. Yep, but it looks like Fab would rather pursue his opponent this time instead of zoning him. And every neutral jump. Mm -hmm. Every time you see the opponent's flash blue whenever they're about to attack, that is the block attack, just in case you're now joining us. Oh. He activates, pushes him away. He's going right into it. Oh, no. Couldn't combo from that position. Yep. No opportunity for Dynamic Fury. We might see the Fennekin. Oh, he mixes it up, so doesn't go for grab this time. He'd rather just wail on his opponent with the heavy attacks. Into a grab. Very, very good stuff. With 71 HP left, I think this is the end of Machamp. We're going to go straight into round three here in game two. So NYC Fab one round away from moving on. Potentially getting into the top three. All right, here we go. Final round. Nice, able to grab that. Build up some meter. Grab attempt, but nice attack right there by Fab to break it. Oh, and avoiding the block attack. Smart move by Fab. I like, I like what he was doing there. He went for a quick block attack just to get the, the move out there, because that move does actually cover a lot of ground. Mm. And here's the Flare Blitz inflicting a lot of damage on Machamp. 
Wow, good damage here. Uh oh, this could be bad. Oh, but he, Shockwave just stopping him in his tracks. And slowing him down, so this is not a good position for Hugs right now. That's why it's really good to call the assist sometimes in uh, situations where your opponent's about to attack you, and that is wow. it. Flare Blitz taking it, 72 HP left on Charizard NYC. Fab moves on. So we're now looking at our top three. So waiting in the lower bracket, we have NY. So Rip using Pikachu and Justin Wong using Weevil. And I must say, Weavile is <laughs> pretty fast. So here we have Frogadier. This is what I wanted to see. The, the most popular support Pokemon here. And we're going straight into dual phase after those Fury Swipes from Justin Wong. And this is where Justin really shines. Wow, and great stuff wow. right there. Rip zoning Weavile really well. We're going to have to see an adjustment as Justin Wong's shield is getting unhealthy. And, and really, Rip, known for his combos earlier, content with just zoning, just throwing moves out. Oh, man, he's doing such a great job right now. He, he does have the life advantage. Oh, he lands the big block attack. But once it switches phase, though, you have to remember that you don't get that the follow-up with the stun. So if it switches, you're going to have to wait and really react off of that. You see Justin Wong's just making it hard. Oh, oh there no. it is. Yes. Once you get caught in that ice trap, it is trouble. Okay, activates with the burst. And if you guys remember, the burst attack from Weavile is like an anti-air super. The horizontal rage isn't the greatest, but vertically, if you are on top of Weavile, you will get caught. Oh, and Rip! In time. Wow, Rip! And Rip attacking even oh, afterwards! Able to land, it, land the Godfist at the end and close out that first round. So 1-0 for Rip right now. So right there, so this just let us know that the supers, at least Pikachu's, is pretty safe on block. Yeah, he did have a free follow pretty much. That looked like a, a pure block string to me. Okay. Wow, and we're going straight into dual phase yet again. Frogadier, here's the lockdown. And Justin Wong opting for a mix-up. Oh, he just throws out the Godfist, hoping to land, and he did, but they did trade hits. Oh, does he leave him in a standing state after Yes, that? exactly, allowing Justin Wong to keep pressuring him even further. Oh, and I like what Justin was doing there with the wake up, putting out the ice there for potentially more damage. Good throw right there by Rip, sending Weavile far away from him. Let's see if Rip will opt to keep zoning. Actually, Justin Wong just surfing in mid-air with the ice. All right, he's going to be... Oh, wow, he landed. This should oh. be a big combo. Nice. Good stuff by Rip, but now we're back in the field phase. He does have first meter, though. He's going to have to activate sooner or later. There he goes. Yep, he goes for it immediately. He's still getting chipped by the assist. And now Rip looking for an opportunity to catch Justin Wong off guard. Justin Wong actually getting shocked by the electric shocks there by Pikachu. I don't know, he probably should try to activate it there, because, I mean, it's not safe once you activate the burst mode. Probably had an opportunity, but I don't know if he was close enough. Oh, oh this is there's big. the crumple. All right. Oh, wow. Nice backdash from Justin. That was beautiful. That move actually lunges back, allowing Justin Wong to let rip whiff and then attack him during the... Um, We're evened up on rounds now, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so that was an amazing whiff punish. Look at that. Weavile has a really good uh, moveset. Oh, and that was the counter right there. You were going to see Thunder. But he did cancel it. Just trying to keep Justin Wong on his toes, but there's the dive kick allowing Justin Wong to get inside and get a combo opportunity. Oh, nice. One for the sweeps. Oh, Justin let it rip. Yep, with the block attack. Oh, and... Oh, new tactics here from Rip. Okay. Opting to use the tail sweeps into a throw. And here's the lockdown from Frogadier. What's Rip gonna go for? Oh, nice stuff there from Justin. And the burst meter is lowering. Wait, Justin Wong did move. Oh, he actually went for his block attack. He Justin caught Wong. him. Yes. Smart stuff right there by Rip. So just Rip, just a sliver of life away to take this first match. And that's the end of the water pulse assist.
12 HP left. That shield is not looking that great. Whoa, and in midair, Rip stopping Justin Wong in his tracks. What a mean Pikachu. Yeah, I knew he was confident going into the match. I didn't know this confident. So Rip right now putting on such a display, making use of that clutch burst super at the very end. I'm actually really impressed with Rip's gameplay. Wow. Yeah. And it's not all combos like we saw earlier. He's doing a great job zoning as well. I'm actually starting to think that Rip was trying to be really... What was the word? He tried to throw us off guard because he kept telling his pl the players when they were practicing, you know, um, I tend to forget the moves. It's the first time I played the game. You know, he's throwing them off guard. Everyone is thinking that Rip probably doesn't have it in the bag, but little do we know. This master of the Vault Shock Fist and the Electric Wing God Fist, which is perfect for Pikachu, right? Because it's an electric type. Look at that. It just flows so well. And uh, we'll see what kind of adjustments Justin Wong is going to make in this matchup. Because right now, he's going to have to turn it up because this is still two out of three. All right, here we go. Surfs right in there, catches him. Oh, the focus crumple. Yep, you could notice Rip knows how that string is going to end, which is why he used the focus attack just to go through there. Right, also known as the block attack. Oh, wow. Great positioning there. Whoa, he caught him. He was frozen for just enough time for Justin Wong to get the opportunity to combo. Yeah, those traps that he leaves out there are very dangerous here. See what you just saw what Justin Wong did there? After he did that combo, he actually crossed up Rip, and Rip went for the block attack, but he whiffed since Justin Wong was behind him. Those are the mix ups that Weavile has, because Weavile does lunge forward in the middle of those strings. Wow, good stuff there from Justin. Wow, he caught him. Wow, Justin Wong. Grab opportunity? Of course. Yeah, I think he's a bit angry. <laughs> Pretty dominant first opening round here. <laughs> Rare footage of Justin Wong actually angry. Uh-oh. Okay, he goes with Eevee. Here we go, round two and game two. Rip up one game here in the set. Caught him right out of there. Good stuff there from Justin. Great conversion. That's crazy. Anti-air fury swipes. Who knew? Now in dual phase, he goes right for the super. Nope, but he does have advantage though. Oh, wow. He's just chaining everything together. Yep, he still has enough burst meter. Oh, but did just you get him? Oh, he manages to catch him, actually. Not today, my good man. So good, good stuff. Yes, getting that Sonic Slash burst attack. So damaging. And now we have Justin Wong with a pretty sizable lead. He's looking at to run real quick. Oh and, oh, and we have the Thunder finally coming out, but is it too little too late? Okay. Wait. Got him. Rip. And this is definitely why some of the players were under the impression that there might be rage because that was actually a lot of damage. Look at that. Yeah, that one as well. Nice grab there from Justin. Good spacing. And I believe. Oh, okay. It kind of left him standing. Not sure if there was an opportunity to combo, but here's the chip damage from Water Pulse. Justin Wong catching him out of the air with that one claw attack. And we're one and one. And now, if you guys like Justin Wong's Weavile, make some noise. It's pretty even. It's pretty even, I think. All right. Cool. So here we have it. Shockwave with Charizard and Water Pulse with Weavile. Justin Wong, of course, trying to zone with the ice. Great block right there by NYC Fab, and he manages to get in. There's the Flare Blitz. Great defense by Justin Wong. Fab trying to use the block attack to stop Justin Wong from rushing him down. There it is. Block attack. Now, was that a punish earlier from Justin Wong? Did he punish that dive attack? That's interesting because it's, actually, it's really safe. As you saw right there, it was close range. Nice probably, jump over. Probably caught fans trying to swing afterwards. Yeah, maybe pressing buttons. Here's the shock, shock wave. And that did a lot of block damage. Justin Wong was right outside of the range for that dive kick. Oh, it hits on both sides too. Such a great move from Charizard. Mm -hmm. Really good area of effect. And Justin caught him. We're back in dual phase. And he is chasing him down, activating the assist. That should be a grab opportunity. But Fat flies right out of there. No respect. Now we're close. Uh-oh. This is not looking good for Fat right now. He's going to have to be careful. Wow. And Justin shuts him down immediately with that claw attack. All right, he switches to his choice, his usual choice for an assist. That is it. The Fab special using Fennekin's Ember. Keep an eye out, guys. 
it looks like Fab usually does a great job with reads, especially in a throw situation. If someone's going to grab him, he'll pull out the assist, and Fennekin's going to come out and really open him up. Yep, and oh, right there, Fab nice hover. Yeah, I like that. But Justin Wong just waiting till he lands, probably expected the block, which is why he opted for the grab. And you, I like how you threw the ice right behind Fab, too, to make it hard for him to escape when they were in field phase. Caught him. Oh, that was an opportunity. Ooh, oh, Fab, wow. Fab just went for two uh, light attacks and immediately snuck in a grab, taking Justin Wong unawares. And the range on that grab, though, is just so deceptive. Doesn't look like it'll reach, but it does. Oh, but is this going to hit? No. Smart. Justin Wong had to respect. Couldn't press forward. Oh, and there's a grab opportunity. No range. It's going to hurt. Oh, wow. That does like 160. 160, exactly. Wow. Wow. And wow, this is getting really interesting. So will Fab opt to stick with Fennekin? Yep. Even though he didn't have it ready. That would, that's his assist of choice. He doesn't quite get the results that he wants with Shockwave. He'd rather rely on Embers being a great defensive assist. Especially knowing that Justin Wong's rush time is really good with the Weavile. Oh, nice anti-air from Fab. Grab attempt, but Justin Wong bursts out of there. Oh, he caught him right through the light attacks. You got to remember, when you have light attacks and they're in their in in involved form in the first mode, those light attacks don't do anything. That's it. That's why you saw Justin Wong literally walk up to him. That was a good guess on Justin Wong's part. Is he going to be able to follow up? There it is. Oh, but he blocks. Oh, again, see, just right through it. You got to be careful. You got to be aware of that stuff. Yep. Fab not recognizing that he can't just keep using light attacks. Oh, there it is, an opportunity. But he has 11 HP left. Oh, oh good jump. Tries to get out of the corner. Flare Blitz. He just waits. Whoa! Oh, he him in the air? Yes, a mid-air grab. And with all that rage, you saw that damage from 400 to 224. Great usage of Ember. Just a Wong's just waiting for his opportunity to strike. One HP left. I mean, there's not much room for error here. Probably even baiting out Fab. Oh, that was a, such a great attempt. Oh, and right there, the dive kick is safe. But Frogadier comes in. You, did Frogadier not do any damage? It, when you're at one HP, the assist does not KO you, it ah, seems. Oh, I see. Learn something new every time we watch this game. <laughs> Gotta ask now, who do you like? Well, I'll be honest, I'm a big fan of Justin Wong's work throughout all the years, but uh, whew, I, I actually think I'll go for Weavile. Okay. Because he's coming from behind, too. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. You can never count out Justin Wong, or anyone else for that matter. It's never over till it's over. You know what they always say, never bet against Justin. That's right, <laughs> that's true. I probably just lost my money then. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is the final set, everybody. Rip versus Justin Wong. Here we go. False Volcano, second set, game one. Okay, now which assist? He's still opting for the Eevee assist, it seems. I know Frogadier has helped him out a lot in winners' finals, but for some reason we have Rip with a change of heart. I think he wants the extra boost, the help. He fears that he's going to need it. Mm. So his mental game right now is thinking that he's going to get hit. Okay. Quite possibly as Justin Wong's rushdown is his trademark. Okay, nice follow-up. Here's the combo. Okay. Oh, nice. Hard. Okay, he did not finish the entire stream catching Justin Wong off guard. That was a nice tick grab set up there. Uh, now, he does have the life advantage here, so Rip is sitting pretty. Yep. Oh, caught him on the way down. Nice move by Justin there. And that's one thing I like about uh, the transitions between field and dual phase. Pl characters that may excel at zoning are going to have to play honest the moment it's up close and personal in dual phase. Yeah. Oh, he tried to catch him there, but Justin made the adjustment. And just the delays with the moves here proving to be so critical. He does have a life advantage. Oh, this is not looking good for Rip right now. 32 HP left on Pikachu and Justin Wong just pushing him into the ice. Such a smart setup. We have Eevee here and also, wait, the activation from both players. Oh, he grabbed him. Let's see the damage. So much, wow. Enough, just enough to kill him. So 1-0 right now in favor of Rip. 
Rage, Man, rage is definitely. There, there's something. There is something. Because yeah. grabs don't do that much usually. Alright, here we go. Okay, Justin Wong immediately opening up with Water Pulse and baiting out the block attack, it seems. Smart move. I would like to see you rip fake and use the block attack and then dash out of it to kind of see get a reaction out of Justin. Oh, absolutely. Um, the way to do that is to basically press a direction and shield after executing, executing the block attack. And but again, Justin with that excellent read, they're able to land that Sonic Slash. Woo. Pure unscaled damage there. So much. And using those Fury Swipes just to lock down his opponent. And there we have Rip trying to stop Justin Wong's rush down. Here's the combo. It's been a while since we've actually seen Rip's combos. Yeah, he's been content with zoning and grabbing. <laughs> but we'll see. He's going to have a full burst meter very soon. But will it be enough to save him in time? Uh-oh, not looking good. With 36 damage left, Justin Wong manages to come right in there with the Night Slash. One and one here in the round. This is such a crucial round between these two. This will really set the tone for the rest of the series. So right. whoever gets this advantage is only going to be one game away from winning the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we have Helping Hand, Assist, and Max, and the Burst. Gage, here we go. Now, is Rip going to opt to try to get an early lead? Is he going to activate? What's he going to do? I would, I, honestly, I would try to activate early on for a chance to get it again later in the match. Oh, indeed. As far as Justin Wong's rush down on the ground, it looks like Justin Wong knows when to stop his strings to bait out the block attack. Oh, that almost looks like an opportunity for oh, him to do something. Him. There's Frogadier yet again. Smart. He knows the range. Good stuff there from Rip. Okay, caught him with the God Fist. Oh, and he gets the wall splat combo too. Back into field face again with these players. Yeah, nice combo there from Rip. But right. just yeah. back into duel. Okay. Oh. Oh, nice back dash from Rip. But not quite a punish afterwards. He oh tried no. Yep, just a while caught him pressing buttons. And that Sonic Slash, so much damage. Oh, indeed. Leaving Pikachu at 52% remaining. Just a while, forcing a 50-50 situation. Trying to mix him up. Oh, he went for a grab. Did he get it? No. Nope, he broke it using an attack. Great job by Rip. Goes in with the dive attack. Uh -oh. Okay, and an activation. 159 health. Wow, so much health back. Wow. Oh, he got right underneath. Oh, wow. And there you have it, guys. You could definitely just go right under attacks. And if I'm not mistaken, did Justin Wong go for a light attack as well? He did. But it wouldn't work in that situation yeah. because he was powered up in burst mode. Yeah. The electric wing god fist. Mm. Staying true to its name. So rips out now 1 0. Yeah, 1-0 actually in the second set. In the second set. This could be it. This could be the last matchup that we'll see. So the question here is, do you think Rip was just trying to collect data in the first set? I think, he, I don't know. If, honestly, if, I think if I was Rip, the first set I would have tried to win. Because you never want to face Justin in grand finals. Yeah. You never do. But we'll see. Maybe it doesn't phase him. Maybe Rip is the st statistical anomaly that isn't phased by his powers. There's no Wong factor here. Mm. We'll see. The Wong Factor is quite strong, people. Never sleep. Here we go. Potentially the last game for Justin Wong here in the Grand Final set, too. Oh, he surfs right in, gets the second attack. And I like that Justin Wong is using that. He doesn't want to just stay, get zoned out. But Rip getting the read on Justin Wong's aerial movement. And as you can see, that dive kick doesn't have that much horizontal range. Oh, and Justin did a great job there just holding back and finding the spacing there. Here comes Rip again, and EV is at max. So there's a helping hand. Manages to get the attack boost. Justin Wong doesn't want to deal with that, locking him down. Oh, he gets the full block attack. But, oh yeah, actually, never mind. The block attack did go through it. Oh, nice reactions there from Justin. And as you can see, Justin Wong using the grab actually gets rid of the time that he has to use the burst attack. And now it's gone. Now the tables have turned. He does have his own burst. So it's not looking... Oh, he has to be careful. Oh, great stuff by Justin Wong. Just waiting for the whiff punish. Gets in there with the grab and a KO. First round in game two going to Justin Wong. Now Rip tried to wake up with the block attack, hoping that Justin was already going to go in, but unable to connect. 
and it did lead to that free grab attempt there from Justin. So to taking that first round, Justin looking to even it up. So who knows? We might go to the decisive final game. Quite possibly. Smart defense by Rick. He's just staying right outside of the ice range. Regardless, Justin Wong still manages to kick it straight into dual phase. And the knockdown from the dive kick, if he, uh, Justin Wong was standing, Rip would have been able to convert. So we're back out to field phase right now. This is why I feel Justin is most dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I like that Rip is finally opting to change his assist. Wow, right oh, through it. Armoring through the assist, okay. Lesson well, I, learned. I guess light attacks and assists do not phase while in burst mode. Okay. Okay. Here's Rip's opportunity. He gets a grab. Let's see the damage. So much. Another opportunity to mix up Justin Wong. He gets yet another grab. Now, what's he going to do? He doesn't have much meter left. Wait, did oh, he did catch, catch Justin him? Wong backdash? Oh, oh that would have been amazing. Oh, wow. my God. No fear. Just jumping right out of the pressure string and shocking Justin Wong. One and one in the round. Here in the round, and this is it? This could be it. Yeah, round, this is game point for Rip. Rip. So the pressure's on right now, Rip. No pressure at all, but I hope you don't meet Justin in a final match. And Justin starting off strong with the assist, probably wanting to save it for later. Oh, indeed. Oh, he swiped him right out of the air. And Justin Wong is so close to having a full burst meter. Nice cross up by Justin Wong right there. Oh, clutch for oh. Rip. This should be a big combo. Wow, and he built up a lot of burst damage, too, from that first okay. meter, that is. Okay. There it is. The second hit. Both players are full. Are we going to see another activation? Wow, the quickest grab. And that did extra damage again. 110 only left on Justin Wong. Is Rip going to just try to zone him? Justin Wong has to lock him down. Great usage of water pulse. Wow. Wade. Did he get him? He blocks. Did he in time? No. Wait. Wow. 105 damage. And I think this might be not yet. 49 HP left on Justin Wong. He has to stay alive in this. Oh, but and that Rip is it. with the block attack. And Rip is your Pokémon Tournament Invitational Champion. Congratulations.